Well, it was an ugly loss for the 49ers against the Dolphins at Levi's Stadium. 43-17 the final. So far this season, the 49ers have yet to win a game at home as they fall to the Dolphins in embarrassing fashion. As we welcome you into the NBC Sports Bay Area Studios, Laura Britt, alongside Dante Whitner and Jeff Garcia. And this was just ugly 49ers football. There's really no way around it. We see um, some coaching decisions by Coach Kyle Shanahan in, in replacing Jimmy Garoppolo with C.J. Beathard for the second half of the game. Also in playing Brian Allen, the cornerback, something that we talked about on Halftime Live. We're going to get to all of that. But your initial reaction to what was that game at Levi's Stadium, Jeff? Again, right from the get-go, no emotion. They got the ball run right down their throat. Initial drive by Miami, put seven points on the board. Not the way you want to start a game at home, especially when you're coming off a rough loss last week to a team that hadn't won a football game in the season. Now you're going against another team that's only got one win on the year, have struggled in games. Yes, they've been competitive, and we knew that they would be a scrappy team, a tough team. But to start out like that and to just let them just run all over you, it was saddening. It was uh, not, not the type of emotion that we talked about that this team needs to have. And then the attention to detail. I mean, the emotion's one thing, but when it comes down to just poor play and poor attention to detail, that's another. And there was a lot of that today. It was ugly. It was really ugly. Robert Sala, you really let this football team down today. I put everything on him. If they don't give up those big um, passes and no early scores, they're able to stick with the running game a little more, they're able to use the misdirection, they're able to use the play action pass. Once you fall behind two or three scores, your running game is out the window, and now you have to rely on your quarterbacks to read defenses, and it was very difficult for them to do today. So, Robert Sala, this game is on you. Also, momentum, a thing that we've been discussing in this 2020 season, when you don't have fans, home field advantage out the window, and you don't have that fan energy to really rally you and when you're down big like they were today against the Dolphins. We saw that in full effect. We got to welcome in our 49ers insider Matt Mayoko right now. And Matt, uh, it, it was an ugly day. That's what we've been talking about here with Dante and Jeff. I want to talk about the coaching decisions from Kyle Shanahan today. To start the game, Brian Allen was attacked early um, and allows the Dolphins to really take a big lead. And also the decision to play C.J. Beathard over over Jimmy Garoppolo in the second half of this football game. Do you think those were the right decisions for the 49ers? No, but I, I don't think that the right decision was to start Jimmy Garoppolo. If at halftime you determine that he's not good enough or he can't protect himself, why was he starting this game? He didn't make it through a complete practice on Wednesday or Thursday. Why was he out there playing if he couldn't protect himself? And then that became apparent in the first half of this game. And as for Brian Allen, none of us even knew who Brian Allen was before he ended up in the starting lineup. A lot of people are going to be criticizing Brian Allen. Allen, don't criticize Brian Allen. Criticize the people who put Brian Allen into that position. It was a no-win position for him. Up from the practice squad on Saturday, in the starting lineup, of course the Dolphins are going to go after him. And if Akella Weatherspoon is healthy enough to suit up for the game, why wasn't he in the starting lineup? There were so many things about this game that absolutely made no sense from a coaching standpoint, from a playing standpoint, from every standpoint. The 49ers looked like a disorganized horrendous football team yeah that's something that Dante and, and Jeff and I have been talking about how do you move forward if you're the 49ers now you've made the decision in this football game to put CJ Beathard in Jimmy Garoppolo clearly uh, from the looks of it not healthy where do they go from here Miyoko well, I don't know, but it comes at a horrible time because these were the five games that were supposed to be the easy games. And the 49ers are a below 500 team. They're in last place in the NFC West. And now they start to face this murderer's row of competition. But if Jimmy Garoppolo is healthy, he's the starter. But the decision-making process in order to put him out there when the offensive line wasn't protecting, it wasn't just the offensive line. There was also a breakdown with, with the tight end as well, but the Dolphins played this thing perfectly. I mean, they were going to pressure him. They were going to put hits on him. They were going to test his mobility, and there was no mobility. This was just a really an utterly co confounding game, bewildering game uh, that the 49ers put out there today. I think you're spitting the truth that a lot of 49ers fans are feeling right now. Matt Mayoko, great insight as always. We're going to get a closer look at the quarterback comparison brought to you by Zenny as we look 
at Ryan Fitzpatrick and what he was able to do and Jimmy Garoppolo and C.J. Beathard. I mean, Ryan Fitzpatrick was out there looking like he was a star. This is a 37-year-old player. He's got experience, and that showed today. He just sliced and diced this 49ers defense. Oh, well, they, he had that magic in him today. Yeah, the beard. You know, the magic man, but no. <laughs> He took advantage of the opportunity. You know, back in 2006, I played for the Eagles. We had a playoff game against the New York Giants. Second half, injuries to DBs. Next thing you know, a safety is out at the corner position. And not taking anything away from a safety's ability to cover, but that's a different position for him to be in. What did we do? We went right after him. We attacked him. Well, that's what Fitzpatrick did. He attacked the corners that... They knew that didn't have the experience straight off the practice squad. And that's what any of us would do. And they took advantage of it. They've got big tree-like receivers. They're going to put the ball up. You saw pass interference down the, down the field because they just gave their guys an opportunity to try to make plays. And if something good didn't happen for them, they were going to get a penalty. And that was going to be a positive as well. So, you know, that being said, we talked about it. Robert Saul and his decision-making as far as how to run this defense. Uh, Witherspoon, the fact that he didn't just start the game, came off the bench. You should be starting. If you're capable of being out there dressed, suited up, you should be on the field. And then from an offensive standpoint, not good. Hey, when you know you're playing against a team that has a rhythm passing game, plus relies on their run, they're going to load the box. Eight guys in the box, play man to man. Bump receivers, get them off their timing so the quarterback is forced to hold the ball on, hold on, hold on to the ball longer. Everything was out of rhythm for the 49ers on offense. Jimmy was out of sync. Obviously, accuracy out of sync. Halftime, they bench him. I don't know whether that's because he didn't feel well physically or they just needed a burst in the second half. It's, uh, you know, Matt made reference to it. There's maybe two games that we could look at in the future that we might, might say they can win. The rest of the games don't look good at all. They made this guy look like Joe Montana and Jerry Rice out there. I'm telling you right now, with those calls that Robert Sala made, you made this guy look like Joe Montana on the football field. I'm bewildered by the calls that he made. Like, you know that this guy is overmatched. You know this going in the game. Your starters might have been overmatched by Devontae Parker, right? Why would you put this guy one-on-one -on -one so many times? What are you trying to prove to your defense? I don't understand. I want to sit on Akella Witherspoon because you guys have been harsh on him. The social media world has been harsh on him. 49ers fans not happy. What is the decision making process? Whose decision is that? I'm healthy enough to dress, not healthy enough to start, but healthy enough to go in when Brian Allen struggles. How does that all play out behind the scenes? Initially, it's on the player. Initially, it's on the player. If you know that you can get out there and compete and help your football team, why would you sit on the sideline and you know that this guy is overmatched? And this is why I've been saying the entire year, and I'm going to say it now, a killer Weatherspoon is soft. S-O-F-T. And you let the football team down by allowing this young guy to get out there. You guys fell behind by three scores, and there's no coming back. So it's on him and Robert Sala. Okay, I want to switch gears and get back to Jimmy Garoppolo, C.J. Beathard, That's that coaching decision. You've had a high ankle sprain. If he's healthy enough to go, if the coaching staff believes that he can start this football game, what do you ascertain from the fact that he gets benched in the second half? I know you say I mean, we don't know what the coaching staff exactly is thinking, but if he can't go in the second half, is that poor production? Is that his ankles hurting? What did you see today? I think coaches probably just wanted to change up in what was going on, on out there on the field. They saw Beathard come in last week give him a little bit of a rise in moving the offense down the field. There was no rhythm to the offense in the first half. I think they just wanted to see a changeup. I don't, I don't necessarily believe that it was due to not feeling good physically. Hey, if he was right going into the game, you have to start Jimmy. He's your starter. He's the guy that you believe in. He's the guy that's going to help you win football games, especially after last week's game. The debacle that Philly was, they needed something better. And Jimmy's supposed to be that guy. Well, he didn't give him better today. Dante, I'm thinking wait, they're I, protecting, I think they're protecting his confidence and his ego a little bit. You don't want <laughs> Jimmy out there and they can't run the football and now he has to throw the ball 25, 30 times, get picked apart and show that he can't read certain coverages and certain defenses. So you might as well take him out of the game right now and let C.J. Beathard ride it out. But this is not the way that the National Football League goes. If we pay you $135 million and you can get on the field and win, get on the field and lead us to a win. Don't come out in the second half. So Shanahan is probably protecting his quarterback right there. Yeah, and just because, okay, what, you throw two interceptions the last two minutes, um, 
you know, hey, you got to learn from your mistakes. You got to bounce back. Hey, it's about tough love and it's about thick skin out there in the National Football League. You got to have all that. We've been talking a lot about head coach Kyle Shanahan. Let's get some reaction right now from Levi Stadium as we listen in to Kyle Shanahan. All right, guys, only injury today, DJ Jones, I um, uh, did not return. He returned, but then took him back out. Go ahead. Kyle, why did uh, Brian Allen get the start? And, and I guess more to the point is, why did it take so long to pull him from the game after four series? Um, just because how down we were going into the game. You know, we got, we got him off of practice squad this week because of the injuries we had. Um, Webster was his backup. You know, Kello, we tried to go this week, but he was too tight to go throughout practice all week. But because of our low numbers, we still dressed him for emergency. Um, so we were trying to hold out, see how long we could go through with that. And when Akello came up to us in the sidelines, said he wanted to go and wanted a shot, um, gave us a little more confidence with his hamstring. And he went in, was able to pull it off and get out there, get out of the game without tearing it. So that was the decision on it. Kyle, what went into the decision to take Jimmy out at uh, at halftime? Um, I mean, just the way the whole game was going. I mean, just kind of watching how we were playing as a whole, how he was playing. Uh, you could tell he was affected by his ankle. I mean, uh, you can ask him more when he gets in, but uh, I, I know he doesn't normally throw the ball that way. And uh, I think he was struggling a little bit because of it and the way the game was going that I was going to keep putting him in those positions and knowing we were going to have to throw it a lot to come back. Kyle, did you have any questions about Garoppolo's ankle? I mean, obviously he was hurt and he missed it, but were you thinking, okay, I got to watch him carefully in this game, or were you surprised that it did develop like this? No, I was surprised. I mean, I think it, it's it's that and the combination of how the whole game was going. You know, I knew going into it, anytime you have a high ankle sprain, that it can seem 100% better, and you get out there and you do a couple things, and it comes right back. I mean, that's something that is going to linger. Um, by no means did it keep him from playing today. Um, but I think it hurt him from being at his best. And the way the rest of the offense was, the way the whole team was going today, um, I didn't think it was good to keep him out there in the second half with that score and everything, and that he wasn't at his best. And that's why I made that decision. Kyle, you mentioned on Friday um, how, how happy you were with the offensive line during the week of practice. What, what's gone? How do you diagnose the issues um, that you guys are dealing with up front? Um, I, I was happy with the week that they had. Um, and I thought they came out and, you know, I thought we run blocked well, and I thought we got way too one dimensional in some of the situations we got in the past game, which puts them in a very tough situation. One we um, weren't in very many times last year at all. Um, and we were definitely in it for most of the game today, um, pretty much the entire second half. And um, I definitely expect those guys to do better. Um, I know we, I, we can help them with staying in some better situations, which doesn't make it easy, but um, just as the offense as a whole, not just the whole line, um, I mean, from the receivers to the quarterback to tight ends to running back to every single coach. Um, this is very disappointing today. Hey, Kyle, I, I got in just a, a minute or two uh, late here, so sorry if I missed some context. I heard what you said about Akello. Just to be clear, he said he could be active but didn't feel like he could be used unless he, it was an emergency. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's exactly how it went. You know, we weren't going to – Wanted him to go this week. We were hoping he could, and he came out on Wednesday and uh, mainly Thursday. Um, just with the way the practice went Thursday, it was too tight to really push it, so he wasn't able to do much in practice, looking like he was ready. Did tell us that he could dress in case of emergency since we had um, two guys coming in who haven't been on the team very long and just taken off practice squad. So we were hoping it wouldn't get to it. We thought it would take two injuries to do it. Um, obviously, with Allen struggling a little bit, uh, we were going to go with Webster. Uh, that was the plan going in, but... Uh, Keller went up to the defensive staff, um, I want to say sometime in the second quarter, um, and told them that he felt good, he was ready to go, and uh, he wanted to go in for the challenge. So at that time, I was very happy to hear that. Uh, so we threw him out there. I know he didn't feel great battling through that, but uh, definitely helped us um, him going out there. So we're getting a few answers to our questions. Dante, you're heated about the Sakella witherspoon uh, situation. We just heard from Kyle Shanahan that – Witherspoon did say, in case of emergency, you can use me. What is your reaction to Akello making that decision and then deciding in the game that he's able to go? If you're healthy enough to dress, you're healthy enough to play, right? And, and there's no excuses for this. I had a cornerback when I was in Cleveland, like my second to last year in the league, practice all week, practice all week on a number one wide receiver. And we get to game day, he say, oh, I'm not healthy enough to play. 
So now you put us in a bind. We gave up 450 yards that day. This reminds me of that situation. If you're healthy enough to play and step on the football field on Sunday, you should be out there. You don't wait for this guy to get beat to say, hey, I'm ready to play. So I'm putting it on him and the defensive coordinator. This is why they lost this game in the, in the way that they did. Jeff, with Jimmy Garoppolo, the ankle was hurt. That's what Kyle Shanahan says. Wrong decision to let him start today, or is it still the right decision? I mean, that's really up to how the quarterback felt throughout the week. And if he's practicing, if he's out there taking reps away from the other players and showing that, hey, I'm capable, I can do what I need to do, you're not going to be 100%. We know that. Hey, you're coming back from a, a high ankle sprain. Those are not easy to recover from, especially in the matter of three weeks. But if you felt good enough to take practice reps, you're getting better throughout the week, you're doing what you need to do in order to get as close to 100% as possible, then you have to go. You're the starting quarterback. You're the leader of this team. You're the leader of that offense. You're the guy that everything runs through mentally and physically. You need to be there for your team. You got to battle through that. I don't think it was the wrong thing. Hey, they're going to watch him. They're going to see, well, when things got out of hand and you throw two interceptions in the last two minutes of the first half, they're going to really start to question where your mind is, where your head's at. All right, right now we want to get in the rest of our crew, Grant Liffman and Ian Williams, as we welcome them in to continue this defensive discussion as we switch gears back to the defense. The 49ers defense allows the Dolphins to put up 43 points on them. What was your evaluation, guys? Yeah, you know, we're going to talk about the corners and we're going to talk about the secondary getting beat, but at the end of the day, it's the defensive line to make it easier on the secondary. How do you think they performed specifically in this game? I thought they did okay. I mean, they didn't do anything statistically crazy. Uh, Kerry Hyder had a couple plays, and then uh, you had a couple TFLs. Um, but for the most part, the defensive line was kind of non-existent. Obviously, the, the Miami Dolphins didn't run the ball as well as they wanted to. They were under 100 yards, so uh, uh, plus mark on that. But uh, for the most part, you, you can't do anything when, you're, when a quarterback is one, two, three, chucking the ball up for a fade to a receiver. There's nothing you can do in two or three seconds. So at the end of the day, uh, the 49ers need to get better as a collective unit on defense. It's a collective unit. Got to get better, especially against the Rams next week.